two, three, ready? We can start. Baruch Hashem, I'm standing here with my son Zavi in Switzerland, the midst of his son, and I have such a lot to be thankful to the Eibishter that I'm standing here with my Einikluch and my son and my daughter-in-law Hadassah and um, Hashem's brachas are with me constantly every day. I say thank you to God Shbaru for reasons which you will soon hear, and I give you my give a to the Torah God Shbaru. When you have the master, which I have to say. Last year, yeah. pardon? that we said about Shimon Hirsch. No? Yeah, last last year, beginning about this time last year. I realized that I had Yenna Machler in my bladder. And this was growing at a slow pace. And the doctor sent me to the hospital and had scans and x-rays. They decided to give me chemotherapy and then radiotherapy. But it was growing at such a rate that they realized chemotherapy may not be good enough. I'd have to have the whole bladder taken out and have a bag for the rest of my but they decided we tried radio, radio uh, chemotherapy first. This they did, and it came on March, April, May, June, July, August, every t twice, twice a week, two, three times a week. And at the end of that period, they gave me another an MRI test, an MRI scan, which they saw it had gone down quite a lot, and they were rather surprised. And they thought, we we'll stop this, we we'll do radiotherapy, we have 11 sessions of radiotherapy. This they did, and by the Yom Tovim time, I had finished. After, no, it's even after Shukas I carried on, they finished after that. And when they gave me the next MRI scan, they saw that it was completely gone, there was nothing left at all. If only for that, to say thank you, HaKadosh Baruch thank you very much for what you've done to me. And... Um, the doctors were very, very surprised, very, very, very happy naturally. And one of the doctors said to me that it can only be through the efforts, the combined efforts of all the Jewish people who pray and, and uh, pray for you, for your getting better, and the Psalms which the Jewish people say for each other, and the synagogue which you pray in, all together it helps the Jewish person. But we realise that. We know we are just doctors, we do our job. But when it comes to Jewish patients, patients they seem to be on a different level, different scale, and their way of getting better is entirely different. I had to have this done before an oper another operation, which had to be done with the heart, because they couldn't do together either the heart or the bladder, and they decided to do the bladder first and the heart afterwards. When it came to the heart operation, which was in November the 28th, after about four, six weeks after the radiotherapy, which my body had, had healed, I strengthened itself somewhat to take the operation for the heart. I needed a new, or, 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 or rotor valve, the main valve has been replaced. Bypass. Not a, it's not a bypass. I had to cut out part of half the heart and replace it with tissues of either a pig, or a metal tissue, metal, or a cow. And decided to, to use a cow tissue. Although my daughter said after, when I woke up, I was saying, <laughs> but I didn't actually tell her. <laughs> and um, they gave me, they, the operation started on May, on, on November the 28th, it should have been a four or five hour operation, it cut me, cut from the chest down to half, uh, down to my stomach, and take out the, take out the heart and do the operation. This, Baruch Hashem, this was successful after certain things which did not go according to the rules of the book. For example, the first time, uh, then my heart stopped beating, and the doctors, in to get it going again, they used um, electric impulses to get my heart going, which, Baruch Hashem, it worked, and got the heart started going again. A short time later, my heart stopped a second time. This time they could not get it going again. I needed a lot of blood transfusions. And to get extra blood which was needed for me, they had to send away to the London Hospital, which just a few minutes up the road, then to send by, this is what the doctor was telling me, they sent by motorcycle 
and to bring back quickly the blood which was needed. But this whole period of me, my heart stopped beating, took about a quarter of an hour. Now you can imagine the heart not beating a quarter of an hour when his mum is called dead or clinically dead, as how the doctors referred me as such. And whilst this took place, I felt my, an, a, a being of myself leaving my body and hovering, I suppose it was called a nefesh, one called it the soul, hovering above my own body, looking down, seeing the doctors working on my body, trying to get me working. And one of the doctors, and this I've never mentioned before, one of the doctors said to a nurse, I need a scissors, quickly bring a scissors, so a surgical scissors, I need to cut something inside me. She quickly went to get the scissors, and as she bought, she pummeled in her hand and it fell on the floor. She quickly picked it up, she put it in a surgical sink for, this, for a disinfectant, meanwhile she bought another scissors. I'll tell you why I'm mentioning this later. And the, um, the, meanwhile my... Why did you want a scissors? I don't know what they do. They don't want a scissors. I haven't been asked a doctor after his wife, but he needed it for. They cut nails with grace. And um, my nefesh, my soul, whatever you wish to call it, suddenly started moving away from my body, so my body getting further away till there was nothing there at all. I was going through the sky towards a him himmel, 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 going up and up and up. And I saw in the distance a big yellow, cosy, a yellow light, like one has the, in a very thick foggy day, one has the orange glow in the, in the night time. That's what it looked like. But it was different to that brownish orange glow. And I came nearer to this <coughs> light. From a, I felt myself drawn into it, like a magnet. And as I came into it, I felt warm, it was cosy, it was warm. Oh, I said, oh, I'm not going to leave this place. This is marvellous. And I felt it, like, put its arms, the warmth around me, and taking me up and up and up at fantastic speeds to the heavens, heaven one, two, three, up to the, the heavens, till I came to the Yeshiva Shomala, not into the Yeshiva Shomala, but outside of the doors of the Yeshiva Shomala. Because there, I heard a whole lot of learning taking place. I heard a lot of voices going on. I didn't see, don't ask me what they were learning, who they were. I, the door was closed, I couldn't see anything inside in, the, in that room. And uh, all I heard was voices, like you go to, for example, Pondish Yeshiva, or another big Yeshiva, you stand outside the door, you hear the voices, but what are they learning? Got no idea. That's what it sounded like. And I thought, oh, Baruch Hashem, I'm going to see Moshe Rabbein in the Rosh Yeshiva. Av Yisqav and Yaakov say, oh, they, the Malachim, I say, oh, I'm a chredic. But it was not to be. I felt suddenly a pull backwards. But up there, did you recognise, did you see anything? I saw, I, I, I did see something, but I'll tell you in a moment. But inside, where well, I learned nothing at all, because I felt myself being drawn backwards. Why was I being drawn backwards? Because meanwhile, the doctors down below had got the blood, put it into me, now they were already working on me to get myself, although up to them I was showing toy I was dead, but they're still trying to work on me. And they, they felt a slight impulse, a slight beat or something in my body. As soon as that beat came along, that's when my nephesh, whatever it was, felt being pulled back into the body to revitalise my whole body. I wanted, I was having a tug of war with this yellow light. I wanted to stay there and the light wanted to pull me back. But the push of my own thing wanted to stay there wasn't strong enough, but I myself being pulled backwards slowly, more and more. But before I left this yellow glow, this yellow glow, I saw, which amazed me, another nephesh wandering around, just doing nothing. I said to it, she's dead. What? What are you doing here? He says, I've got no Ganesan, I've got no Gehenna. Why was this? I said, I, I need, I need a Gilgal to mistake myself to repay back what I did wrong. And I can't do that. Well, I can't go anywhere until this is paid back. Tell me, maybe I can help you. So he said to me, 
a long time ago, I borrowed some money from a friend of mine and to pay back at a certain date. This date came and I paid him back. Oh, but it's lacking one penny, one a coin, something. I can't wait, penny, a penny, I've got no idea what type of coin. He said, he owed a little bit left to pay back. And I said, oh, don't worry, I'll pay you back. Oh, but I didn't have time to pay him back. Hashem had other thoughts in mind and I was left up without paying back this one coin. When my nephew came up to the base in Shomada, where they have enormous big scales, mistress one side, and various the other side, they put me on one side where the mistress were, and mistress went right down, and right straight to Ganadin. When I was going to Ganadin, the black Malochin came along and says, oh, 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 oh no, he hasn't paid back a penny. He can't go to Ganadin. That stopped me going to, when it, so the, the Malochin took hold of me, put me into Gehenna. When it came to Gehenna, the white Malochin came along and said, oh no, 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 no. His mistress is more than that one penny which he owed. Therefore I'm stuck here. I need a ticket, I have to have a gilg on the shomer to go back to pay back that one coin. However gilg will it be, I don't know. But there's no Ganadin till I can pay back this. And that's a Musa Haskell to learn to people, which I learned from this master. Don't buy things in the shop, put it on the books. Because I'm here in Switzerland and my brother, Halabi Shalom, was lifted suddenly. Last Wednesday he went to have a shower. He was Baruch Hashem, it was perfectly alright. And he has a heart attack and in that second he was nifter. The Levi was last Wednesday now to school. I'm sitting sure at the moment. My she was going to get up next Sunday morning, but one never knows in a split second whether the heart can carry on or the heart will stop. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. If you owe money, you owe money. And it would not stop owing money if you're nifter, there's Gilgulim after Gilgulim to let money is, is repaid back. Don't take money on loads and it's, well, that's one has to, but uh, one relies upon. Um, up on the I think it should be alright. And if you've got money to buy furniture, buy the furniture. If you haven't, don't take out, don't borrow money, hoping you're going to pay back in time. No thing is hoping either you do or you can't. That's one thing I've learned. And I got, oh, I just mentioned at the moment, with the first chemotherapy I had and the radiotherapy, which may be better, one doesn't understand how important the Bruch Asha is. The body is full of veins, hollows, everything. There's miles and miles of a vein which blood courses through. Stop one for the minutes. Finished. A heart attack. Bl a bl blood clot. Anything can take place. When you go through what I've been through, and the pain of going to, before they made this chemotherapy, the pain of going to the toilet, one has no hasaka, what pain can be like going to the toilet to be mushed in, what pain is like for my daughter, she heard me crying in the toilet just to pass the water. It was agony. And I just hope this my part of Ganes and what I went through then. Again. My part of Gehenna. I, I just hope I, my, my Gehenna was of that pain of going you said to the toilet. Ganesan. I should have. That was my, uh, my Gehenna, and I go straight to Gehenna, and I'll say, Abba, the carbon, the carbon, say, Livne Chisay Chubedecha, we came the Kisay Chubedecha in the Brocha of Ashayotza. No other Brocha do we have this. Livne Chisay Chubedecha. Well, just think the top part of the body is Ruchmias, the bottom part is Gashmias. No, the whole thing, the whole body, Hashem is right, created us in his form, in his likeness. That's the whole thing is Ruchnius. Everything has got din which applies to it, and we should keep to these dinim. And everything, the dinim inside the toilet, the dinim when you come from the toilet, how one should behave, and um, that we should know when you say the bracha, know the meaning of the words. Every shul has got posters near the base of the say, Why should have these little cards in your pocket? Take it out, read it, but don't do it by heart and do other things at the same time. You have to have your kavana, your intention, what this bracha means. We are full of chokhmah and understanding. And therefore, 
This bracha, to me, now is a bracha mamish of life and death. Yeah. To know what you're saying and don't do other things at the same time. And the end of the master was, after all that, suddenly I found myself being swiftly pulled back, pulled back, whizzing through space into my body. In seconds I was there. And when I got there, the doctor was banging me, shaking my head and saying, are you awake? Are you awake? Are you alright? Are you alright? And, uh, yeah, 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 I found myself better. And after a few minutes, when I got myself better, suddenly I thought to myself, ooh, the scissors, Master. I said to the doctor, Doctor, when I was having an operation, did you ask a nurse for scissors? He looks at me, yes. Doctor, did that scissors, did the nurse drop the scissors on the floor? He was taken aback, he couldn't believe it. Yes, how do you know? Because I saw it taking place. I was up there looking down at my body, and I saw it drop, put it in the sink in that corner, in the corner of the operation theatre, to get to, gave me another scissors. He sat down, and he was flabbergasted. <laughs> and let me think for that moment. And he also said to me, he also said to me, we never thought we'd bring you back to life again. To us, he was completely finished. But we know, same as the first doctor with the bladder department, we know, you Jewish people, how you pray for each other, you help each other. In synagogues, you pray for each other. And we have a, a never, we have a, a Jewish person in a hospital, from morning till night, there's comings and goings. The gabbas come, other people come, friends come. There's always people coming and going. With other nationalities, there hardly is anybody. Maybe a son comes, a daughter, a parent comes for a few minutes and they go home. But the Jewish people, that bed is constantly in use, visiting hours, there's always somebody there. That itself, a person should know, makes, a, makes uh, our clients, makes our patient better. Just to have patients come again. And, and that's what the doctor told me. And those is this big failure. You come to visit a person, you take away the 500 of an illness of a person, and that is 100%. And whatever's left, another 500 left of that. And a person should be being a vaka cholem, it's double shit. We say in the morning, end of the chain, and shall pay, but we're going to bring them into Chasodom, and we say a big cholem, and it's going to go to some mates. All together, it's all pushed in together, there's Ein Lehem Shia. Bikr is extremely important. And that was my last